this was never planned for. Luckily I brought my fishing rain gear. Getting a little drizzle here. So far we've seen one doe. Saw her get up, do a little shimmy shake to dry herself off. But haven't seen anything since. So we just had some clouds go back over. It's a little more rain. So it's starting to brighten back up. Hopefully this rain's going to uh, uh, gonna let up. And I think that we should be done the rest of the day. So hopefully these deer start moving. Hopeling day in Missouri. 2020 sticking it to us. Check out this little seven pointer coming on in. Strutting his stuff, he's got his nose down to the ground. It gets to a point, right now I've got a southwest wind, so he's about to come up and catch my wind and check out his reaction. His head pops up, you'll notice the front left leg. There's a quick little stomp, looking around, trying to identify what he's picking up. He won't cross that point. Stops, takes a look around. He wants to go through, but he's questioning that wind. And then finally decides it's not worth the trip. This goes to show you how important it is to play the wind when sitting in your stand. Well, as y'all can tell, it is windy. So day two of opening season, rifle in Missouri, not a whole lot better. We had storms yesterday, with rain all in the morning, high winds in the evening. And now Sunday, the rain has stopped, but we had storms through last night. 20 plus mile an hour winds up to 40 mile an hour gusts. So we didn't attempt coming out this morning. Here we are afternoon, it's supposed to calm down a little bit. We got about two hours of hunting and uh, we're holding on tight. <laughs> so wind's still blowing pretty good. So last night, uh, at the, uh, about a half hour before shooting time was over, we had quite a bit Quite a bit of action, a lot of small bucks running around chasing doe. Uh, no big shooters. Had a small seven point come up. Stuck around for a little bit until he got whiffed of a doe and then took off running. So hopefully one of those bigger bucks show up this evening. So let's talk about our stand placement. I am just inside of a tree line of a southeast corner of a previously chopped cornfield to the west of a creek. I am targeting those deer that are coming in, hugging that creek, and cutting in between the power lines and that cornfield. And as luck would have it, I see a doe running around just between that power line and the creek. And to my surprise, she's not alone. She's got what looks to be a nice eight point with her. Now some are asking the question, why haven't I shot this buck? Unfortunately, I'm looking for a little bit larger trophy, the one he's presenting to me now. I've got an eight point already on the wall, which scores out about 118. I'm looking to target 
anything upwards of a score of 130 or more. And unfortunately for me, this buck just isn't there. So yet, I'm gonna have to pass on another young buck that needs at least about another year or two in order for me to pull the trigger. Now this could be a mistake, but only time will tell. If I give this buck another year, we could be at our mark. Hopefully he's still around. With the wind and rainy conditions, I spend a lot of my time glassing for deer as they can easily sneak up on you when you don't have the advantage of the loose dry leaves and the rustling as they begin to walk. So after seeing these three doe play around and feed for a little bit, I decided to give out a call and a rattle after they leave. And here, nice little six pointer comes out of the creek bed. For me, there's no better call than rattling during the rut. This heightens the curiosity of both young and mature bucks out into the open in order to identify what all the commotion is about. Take a look at how cautiously this buck is coming into the area. He's pausing for periods of time, only moving his head and his ears in order to identify where those rattling was coming from. This is a key indicator of when you're done calling and or rattling, be sure to remain absolutely still and quiet. Try not to bump your bag or your antlers on your deer stand or make any commotion as this could alert that deer prior to him getting to you. go back to that earlier buck that just caught wind of me earlier in this video. Check out his body language and his mannerisms while I'm in the tree. The continuous stomp of the front leg. He's still looking as though he wants to cross that path as though there's something over there. And you got me. Here we are, standard square off with a buck. 
he obviously sees there's something in that tree that's just not right. And after much debate, he gone. <laughs>